50 Days with Jesus, Week 5, Mark 11, and Chapter 14, Verse 11. Day 29, Mark 11, Verses 1 through 19. When they had almost reached Jerusalem, as far as Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent on two of his disciples. Go to the village facing you, he said, and as soon as you get there, you will find a foal tethered, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing that? Say, the master wants it and will be sure to send it back here at once. The two disciples went, and finding a foal tethered outside a door in the street, they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the foal? And the two disciples answered as Jesus had told them, and they allowed them to go. Then they brought the foal to Jesus, and when they had laid their cloaks on it, he seated himself on it. Many of the people spread their cloaks on the road, while some strewed boughs, which they had cut from the fields, and those who led the way, as well as those who followed, kept shouting, God save him! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! God save him from on high! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. And after looking around at everything, as was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, after they had left Bethany, Jesus became hungry, and noticing a fig tree at a distance and leaf, he went to it to see if by any chance he could find something on it. But on coming up to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. So addressing the tree, he exclaimed, May no one ever eat again of your fruit. And his disciples heard what he said. They came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple courts and began to drive out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of the pigeon dealers and would not allow anyone to carry anything across the temple courts. Then he began to teach. Does not scripture say, he asked, my house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began to look for some way of putting Jesus to death, for they were afraid of him, since all the people were greatly impressed by his teaching. As soon as evening fell, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Day 30, Mark 11, 20-33 As they passed by early in the morning, they noticed that the fig tree was withered up from the roots. Then Peter recalled what had occurred. Look, Rabbi, he exclaimed, the fig tree which you doomed is withered up. Have faith in God, replied Jesus. I tell you that if anyone should say to this hill, be lifted up and hurled into the sea, without ever a doubt in his mind, but in the faith that what he says will be done, he would find that it would be. And therefore I say to you, have faith that whatever you ask for in prayer is already granted you, and you will find that it will be. And whenever you stand up to pray, forgive any grievance that you have against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven also may forgive you of your offenses. They came to Jerusalem again. While Jesus was walking about in the temple courts, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came up to him. What authority have you to do these things, they said. Who gave you the authority to do them? I will put one question to you, said Jesus. Answer me that, and then I will tell you what authority I have to act as I do. It is about John's baptism. Was it of divine or human origin? 
answer me that. They began arguing together. If we say divine, he will say, why then didn't you believe him? Yet can we say human? They were afraid of the people, for everyone regarded John as undoubtedly a prophet. So their answer to Jesus was, we do not know. Then I replied, Jesus, refuse to tell you what authority I have to do these things. Day 31, Mark 12, 1-12 Jesus began to speak to them in parables. A man once planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press, put a tower, and then let it out to tenants and went abroad. At the proper time, he sent a servant to the tenants to receive from them a share of the produce of the grape harvest. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. A second time the owner sent a servant to them. This man, too, the tenants struck on the head and insulted. He sent another, but him they killed, and so with many others. Some they beat, and some they killed. He had still one son, who was very dear to him, and sent him to them last of all. They will respect my son, he said. But those tenants said to one another, here is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and his inheritance will be ours. So they seized him and killed him, and threw his body outside the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and put the tenants to death, and he will let the vineyard to others. Have you never read this passage of scripture? The stone which the builders despised has now become the cornerstone. This cornerstone has come from the Lord and is marvelous in our eyes. After this, his enemies were eager to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd, for they saw that it was at them that he had aimed the parable. So they left him alone and went away. Day 32, Mark 12, 13 through 34. Afterward, they sent to Jesus some of the Pharisees and Herodians to set a trap for him in the course of conversation. These men came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are an honest man and are not afraid of anyone, for you pay no regard to a person's position, but teach the way of God honestly. Are we right in paying taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, Jesus said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a coin to look at. And when they had brought it, he asked, Whose head and title are these? The emperors, they said. And Jesus replied, Pay to the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and to God what belongs to God. And they wondered at him. Next came Sadducees, the men who maintained that there is no resurrection. Their question was this, Teacher, in our scriptures Moses decreed that should a man's brother die, leaving a widow but no child, the man should take the widow as his wife and raise up a family for his brother. There were once seven brothers, the eldest married but died and left no family, and the second married his widow and died without family, and so did the third. All the seven died and left no family. The woman herself died last of all. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be? All seven brothers having had her as their wife? Is not the reason of your mistake, answered Jesus, your ignorance of the scriptures and of the power of God. When people rise from the dead, there is no marrying or being married, but they are as angels in heaven. 
As to the dead, and the fact that they rise, have you never read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not God of dead people, but of living. You are greatly mistaken. Then came one of the teachers of the law, who had heard their discussions. Knowing that Jesus had answered them wisely, he asked him this question, Which commandment is the most important of all? The most important answer, Jesus, is, Hear, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Wisely answer, teacher, exclaimed the teacher of the law. It is true, as you say, that there is one God, and that there is no other beside him, and to love him with all one's heart, and with all one's understanding, and with all one's strength, and to love one's neighbor as one loves oneself is far beyond all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Seeing he had answered with discernment, Jesus said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one ventured to question him further. Day 33, Mark 12, 35 13 While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, How is it that the teachers of the law say that the Christ is to be David's son? David said himself, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How comes it then that he is to be his son? The mass of the people listened to Jesus with delight. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, See that you are on your guard against the teachers of the law who delight to walk about in long robes, and to be greeted in the streets with respect, and have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at dinner. They are the men who rob widows of their homes and make a pretense of saying long prayers. Their sentence will be all the heavier. Then Jesus sat down opposite the chest for the temple offerings and watched how the people put money into them. Many rich people were putting in large sums, but one poor widow came and put in two small coins, worth very little. Then calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you that this poor widow has put in more than all the others who were putting in money into the chests. For everyone else put in something from which he had to spare, while she, in her need, put in all she had, everything that she had to live on. As Jesus was walking down the temple courts, one of the disciples said to him, Teacher, look what fine stones and buildings these are. Do you see these great buildings? asked Jesus. Not a single stone will be left here on another which will not be thrown down. Day 34, Mark 13, 3 through 27. When Jesus had sat down on the Mount of Olives facing the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew questioned him privately, Tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign when all this is drawing to its close. Then Jesus began, See that no one leads you astray. Many will take my name and come saying, I am he, and will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed, for such things must occur, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. 
there will but be the beginnings of the birth pains. But see to yourself, they will betray you to the courts of law, and you'll be taken to synagogues and beaten, and you will be brought up before governors and kings for my sake, so that you can bear witness before them. But the good news must first be proclaimed to every nation. Whenever they betray you and hand you over for trial, do not be anxious beforehand as to what you will say, but say whatever is given to you at the moment, for it will not be you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his son, and children will turn against their parents and cause them to be put to death, and you will be hated by everyone because of me. Yet the person who endures to the end will be saved. As soon, however, as you see the foul desecration, standing where it ought not, the reader must consider what this means. Then those of you who are in Judah must take refuge in the mountains, and a person on the housetop must not go down, or go in to get anything out of their houses, nor must one who is on their farm turn back, to get their cloak. And alas for pregnant women, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray too that this may not occur in winter, for those days will be a time of distress, the time of which has not occurred from the beginning of God's creation until now, and never will again. And had not the Lord put a limit to those days, not a single soul would escape, but for the sake of God's own chosen people, he did limit them. And if at that time, if anyone should say to you, Look, here is the Christ. Look, there he is. Do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and display signs and marvels to lead astray, where possible, even God's people. But see that you are on your guard. I have told you all this beforehand. In those days, after that time of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars will be falling from the heavens, and the forces that are in the heavens will be convulsed. Then will be seen the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his people from the four winds, from one end of the world to the other. Day 35, Mark 13, 38 through 14, 11. Learn the lesson taught by the fig tree. As soon as its branches are full of sap and it is bursting into leaf, you know that summer is near. And so may you, as soon as you see these things happening, know that he is at your doors. I tell you, that even the present generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, not even the Son, but only the Father. See that you are on watch, for you do not know when the time will be. There is like a man going on a journey who leaves his home puts his servants in charge, each having their special duty, and orders the porter to watch. Therefore watch, for you cannot be sure when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, at midnight, at daybreak, or in the morning. Otherwise he might come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. It was now two days before the festival of the Passover and the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for an opportunity to arrest Jesus by stealth and put him to death, for they said, Not during the festival, or the people may riot. When Jesus was still at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, while he was sitting at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of choice spikenard, perfume of great value. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. 
Some of those who were present said to one another indignantly, Why has the perfume been wasted like this? This perfume could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. Leave her alone, said Jesus, as they began to find fault with her. Why are you troubling her? This is a beautiful deed that she has done for me. You always have the poor with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has perfumed my body beforehand for my burial. And I tell you, whenever in the whole world the good news is proclaimed, what this woman has done will be told in memory of her. After this, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were glad to hear what he said and promised to pay him. So he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. 